I think it's going to turn out to be an opportunity. Certainly, you know, it, it makes people nervous, particularly when I think volatility for so long uh, was, I'll call it, suppressed by low interest rates, you know, as those yields have moved up. Certainly, as we've seen, the volatility has picked up. But I still think you have to go back to the fundamentals uh, and what's going on in the world. So, you know, earnings, you know, you talked about it earlier. They continue to come in. You know, you can complain about certain pieces of the earnings. But on the overall, obviously, we're growing north of 20 percent in terms of earnings. That's got to be a positive. Um, outside the U.S., you know, Europe slowing a bit. Uh, U.S. will probably slow here in the fourth quarter, but again, nothing near kind of recessionary level. So I think uh, it is going to turn out to be a, uh, a bit of a blip, obviously, um, but it'll turn out to be an opportunity. All right. So if that's the case, Bill, let, let's kind of dive in on this a bit, because the places that we are seeing really deep value are places like in, say, banks, regional banks especially, places like the semiconductor industry, places like the home builders. These have been in pronounced downtrends for quite some time. Bank stocks, by the way, catching a big bid this morning. We'll see if that carries to the bell. Is this the time that you should be going for deep values like those if you think the economy is going to do well, like you said? Yeah, I think you look in spaces, you're right. Um, I, I'd probably point to, you know, perhaps energy. You know, that's a spot that uh, certainly has gotten hit uh, as the worries about the, the global economy have come through. Um, you know, but you're right in terms of certainly you could look at the financials, uh, not a place where we'd necessarily right now go. Um, but I think you're right, though, if, if we do have that comeback uh, and the, you know, the markets start to price in the economy continuing to chug along, you would think the financials would perk up and and the semis and everything else. All right. A couple other hot spots here. First of all, you've got emerging markets outside the U.S. They've been taking a beating. Some people say this might be the opportunity. Others say there's a lot more pain ahead. I'm also looking at what's happening with bonds, treasuries especially. It wasn't that long ago, just about a month ago, where we had the highest yields for the 10-year Treasury note in seven to eight years. How would you be allocating money given the opportunities that seem to be presenting themselves for investors? Well, I think you can look for selected opportunities in emerging markets. I wouldn't yet, you know, go, I'll say, all in on emerging markets or go overweight yet. Uh, I think part of the problem there is with the dollar continuing to be strong, uh, it is certainly weighed on some of those emerging markets. And I just think it's probably uh, still too early there. I think places like Japan, to me, look more interesting, you know, obviously getting uh, really hurt overnight last night. But I think there's good reason, you know, cheap market. Um, as long as the global economy continues along, they should do well. I think that's a place where if you're looking internationally, to me, it looks really attractive. Um, you know, in terms of bonds, I'm not overly excited about bonds. I think the, I don't know if it's good news or not, but I do think you don't have to worry as much about a spike in yields because we do have the global economy, obviously, outside of the U.S., um, cooling off a bit. Again, it's not, I don't think it's going into any sort of recession, um, but that should help at least keep the yields from, you know, having another, I'll uh, say, big spike up. They, I think over time they'll move up, uh, but I think it's all right there. So as these rates set up the way that they are right now? Does it make it so that this normalization that the Fed is trying to accomplish, does it make it a little bit more like the markets would have to deal with it? Or are we seeing competition for capital because of yields on savings accounts and certificates of deposits and, and certainly on, on Treasury securities? No, I think that's exactly what you're seeing is the competition. You know, for a long time, you would be able to, well, certainly you could have said the, the dividend on the S&P 500 was better than, than short-term yields. Now you've got that really the other way around. Um, I mean, for off and on, you could have said 10 year yields, you know, you, you had dividends better than 10 year treasury yields. So I think that is the competition. Uh, I still would say when you look at earnings, uh, any of the numbers that I run, uh, stocks are still inexpensive relative to yields. But again, it's a better uh, comp competitor now. So you're going to see these times of going back and forth. And, and, you know, just like any other better competitor, people will find some better value there sometimes. And I, I think Again, I just view it as a more of a normalization. It doesn't really feel good, um, but when you think about in history, we usually have about a 5% sell-off about every two months um, since 1928. Uh, we just didn't have a lot of those sell-offs, and I think you just have to get your mind around that we'll probably move more towards that historical norm rather than where we were. 